This is a video over the modeling of different forces in two dimensions. So, what I mean by that is, I mean is, how does, whoops, do the right color. What forces does this, I guess, axis, or hinge, work with? Well, a hinge, whoops, a hinge does not affect does not stop, I guess, rotational force. So if this wanted to rotate that way or that way, it would not prevent it from rotating. What it does do is prevent it from going in the x direction or the y direction. So it applies a, a force in the x and y directions. So it keeps it stationary around this point, but again, it does not prevent it from rotating. So it allows it to rotate freely. Now, this point right here is against the wall. Now this is a smooth wall, so with, since it's smooth, it only applies a force perpendicular to the wall. So it only applies a force perpendicular, and they often call this N. So it doesn't prevent it from going down or up, or rotating. So it can do all that. It does not prevent it from doing any of those things. It only prevents it from going straight into the wall. It doesn't prevent it from going down the wall or up the wall. Now if there was friction, and I'll, den I'll denote my my systems that are friction with some type of curvy bumpy line, then it will provide a friction force F. So it will it can provide a force in the X direction in this case, some friction force that is that is uh, parallel to the wall. And again, it still applies that force N. So that's for this system. If we go down, this system prevents it from going that way, that way, and from rotating. So it cannot rotate, it cannot go up, and it cannot go down. So it, it provides a... It provides a force in the x direction, a force in the y direction, and a rotational force. So it keeps this from wanting to fall. Because gravity, say this is the center of it, center of the center of gravity, it's pulling it down, and this is providing a rotational force or a moment that keeps it from wanting to go this way. And again, it it keeps it from going this way, so it has a force in the x direction and a force in the y direction. So if we go down one more, now this one, it's it's again it, this one, it it allows it to rotate, but it applies a force in the x direction and a force in the y direction. Oops, I did that backwards. Applies a force in the y direction and a force in the x direction. And this provides a force straight up. Now this can rotate, or this can rotate, and it can go that way and that way. And again, there's no friction. But if there was friction, we so we added a couple little bumpy lines. It would now have friction. Friction, and assuming that it didn't have a bearing there, it would now apply a force F, some force F for friction, and it's still again. The force that is going straight up, straight against us at a 90 degree angle of the wall, force N. So let's go to the next one. Now this is kind of the same thing. This can rotate, so it does not prevent, it doesn't have some type of, it allows it to rotate, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And this again can rotate again, so that's still the same. The only difference is, is now this can go that way and that way. So this is only providing a force straight up, straight up, preventing this from going straight down. So this is providing some force, Fy, and this is providing some force, so maybe the weight, so Fg, all the weight is pulling it straight down. And this provides the force from it, from it coming down, <laughs> I'm saying that really badly. Oh, coming straight down. But again, it can roll that way, roll that way, or rotate that way. So it can rotate either way. 
And this is kind of the same idea. All it does is provide a force in the y direction, so it constrains it from going up and down, but it can still go this way and that way, and this can still rotate that way or rotate that way. So this is only providing a force, in this case, in the y direction. So this is only providing a force in the y direction, unless maybe it started getting corroded and there was some type of friction that was then put in there. But we'll usually assume that it's oiled really well, so it can can swing back and forth in this area. So again, that only prevents it from going up and down. And this one, this is this is a beam put into a wall. Now the wall is now not letting not letting it go that way or that way, and it won't let it rotate. So it cannot rotate. So this force or this wall, this wall, whoops. This wall applies a force in the x direction, so some force in the x direction, some force in the y direction, and some rotational force. So it keeps it from rotating. And this is the same idea where it's welded. It prevents it from going that way, or that way, or rotating again. So that is the different types of uh, two-dimensional modeling that you may encounter but there's really nothing special. I guess the last thing I would add is let's say that you had a rope attached right here and a rope can only apply a force going that way. So it can only pull, it cannot push. So it can only pull in the direction of the rope at this angle at this angle, whatever this angle is unless, unless we have a saggy rope which is still the same concept, but unless we have a saggy rope, it applies a force at this angle. So there's a force right here at this angle because it's sagging, and whatever the the point right next to it, it's basically tangent, not... Yeah, it's tangent to the point where it, this rope connects to the wall. So there's a straight force pulling out that way, so it's this force and not, it's you use this angle and not this angle. If that makes any sense, I'm kind of making it cloudy and probably not doing a good job. But again, if it's pulling it straight, has a strung and it's very taut, has no slope in it, it's whatever angle the rope is at, but if it's kind of a, a, a slumpy or loose rope, it's whatever angle straight out that way is. So those are the different types of modeling you may need to do for the action of forces.